As a psychologist in my independent practice, I see many dancers who are struggling with emotional problems that are directly related to trying to reach their goals in this profession, which I think is very sad. And it's also made me a strong believer in taking a mind-body approach to dancer wellness in this population. What do we look for in dancers? Obviously, we need to start early, usually around the ages of seven or eight years old in childhood, and continue through that very awkward period of adolescence so the body can be molded and shaped because most ballet dancers, they're dancing on point and not everybody can do that. I love this slide showing what it looks like on the inside and what we have to do. But you basically have to conform to an ideal body shape and you have to do a very artificial technique that selects only a few. The failure rate, unfortunately, is very high. And I see a lot of those dancers in my practice. When I did a national survey of almost 1,000 dancers, 63% did not achieve professional status, even though 90% wanted to be in a company. So we have a very high failure rate, which leads me to the question, what psychological and physical factors account for this high attrition rate in ballet? The answer was really unclear before the late 20th century. We did not have any longitudinal studies that quantified mental or physical factors linked to attrition in ballet students. There was no information on the mind-body relationship regarding attrition in professionals because of injuries. So what I'm going to be doing today is talking about two early studies that we did that eventually led to what we're doing right now, which is New York City Ballet's wellness program. And we have been able to cut the rate of disability by 46%, which makes a big difference, especially in a very short career. We started our first study at the school, which is considered the leading dance academy in the United States. They have stringent entrance auditions. They basically go over your body like you were a racehorse, feeling everything to see what you can do, how high you can get your leg up, how much your foot can point. And if you pass that, you get in. Then there are annual evaluations. So basically, if you can't conform, at some point, you're going to get weeded out of that school. And what we see is 5%, that's a very low number, actually complete the nine years of training required to be a professional. In our study, we followed 40 dancers. This comprised 56% of female dancers who were enrolled in three intermediate advanced divisions. And we followed them over a four-year time period to see what happened. Well, in the first year, body type, not surprisingly, was a major issue. Age of menarche, 13, significantly lower than the students who continued. So they were basically losing that prepubescent shape, which is associated with the delay, and a delay starts at 14 or older. They also had more physical deficits. They had a weaker jump, less flexibility, and straight legs. Now, you probably don't think of straight legs as a factor that might weed out ballet dancers, but what do we need? We need hyperextension in the knee to get that beautiful line in dance. The consequences, well, psychologically, ethical values were significantly higher. And what this means is that they, they were preoccupied with their cultural norms, the body type, the technique in ballet, which they could not achieve. And they had more major injuries. Half of them had these serious injuries that basically took them out of the running where they could not take classes for over four months. And these are young kids. The second year, disordered eating appeared to be an issue, again, for the dancers who were asked to leave. They also had more physical deficits. Look at the number. Hmm? Unequal relevé, a lower relevé, poor turnout, which is essential for ballet, less flexibility, poor point position, 
and fewer of them were right turners, which we have believed may be associated with <laughs> ocular dominance. Now, why do you need to be a right turner? That's what you do in ballet choreography. Very few people are left turners, unless you're occasionally allowed to change the choreography, which doesn't happen too often. Third and fourth year, we see a lower body image in these dancers who are not making it. We see an eating disorder profile and their ideal weight. Look how low it is, 19% below ideal weight for eye way beyond what you need to be a professional dancer. So the outcome over four years, over half of our sample that all had already passed a stringent audition were asked to leave. 30% found a position in a regional company and only 15% made it to the national level. The success rate is really low, even when you go through the selection process even when you're in the advanced level and you're still at the school. Our conclusions, both physical and psychological problems, characterize elite students who drop out of ballet. Risk factors to keep in mind, a normal age of menarche, physical limitations that may impair their ability to do the technique, being a left turner, and eating problems. Which gets me to the final point, screenings and interventions are crucial. So in summary, I believe students need help accepting the limitations of their bodies, which they don't want to do. It helps to educate them about these limits, what you can and can't change, normalize disappointments. I tell them nobody has a perfect body and a lot of their favorite dancers up there don't have perfect bodies. Offer hope. You know, what can they change? What direction can they go in? Moving from students to professionals, what factors are linked to injuries in these dancers? Well, we know that professional dancers are accomplished athletes and artists. For years, we were just considered artists. Studies have shown that the mental and physical demands exceed professional football, which is pretty amazing. And I love to tell this to the men, especially when they've been teased most of their lives for taking ballet classes. I said, you're better than a top level professional football player. But to be an artist, you need to have musicality, a compelling stage presence, and artistic interpretation, right? That's really crucial. And how do we measure success? We don't have a field goal or home run. We have an inner sense of satisfaction, perhaps, and we have critical reviews from our ballet masters and directors and you know the dance critic who writes about you. That's all you have. And I think it's one reason why dancers push themselves so much, because they can't really figure out when they're good enough. And usually, in their minds, they never reach that goal. So the second study looked at psychological factors and injuries in the two most celebrated ballet companies in the US. We had 29 dancers in our sample, which was 64% of uninjured soloists and principals who were currently performing. In terms of demographics, we had male and female, which was nice. Looking just at the women, look how delayed their menarche is significantly delayed compared to 12.5 in the general population. 54% were irregular, and we have 17% with secondary amenorrhea, which we defined in this study as five months or more. Secondary amenorrhea and stress fractures were significantly related, obviously part of the female athlete triad that need to catch early and correct. Then we looked at physical stressors and injuries. Big surprise, age. Now when you're 30 years old and you're not a dancer, that's considered young, I think. Hmm? Like 50 is the new 40 or whatever. But anyway, when you're 30 years old in ballet, it takes a toll. And indeed we found significantly more major injuries, total injuries and more months of disability amounting to an average of 16 months where they could not dance. 
personality traits for different injury groups. Look at the stress fractures. I was actually surprised by the findings. More enterprising, more disciplined, more extroverted, more adjusted. So we're not dealing with a neurotic population. We're dealing with people who are really enterprising and they're very focused on what they want. I wonder with the discipline how many breaks they actually take because I know when you're very disciplined, you go from one thing to another to another. Finally, looking at the most injuries, total number that they had experienced, the one personality trait that separated the group more enterprising. So I look at it as a double-edged sword. If you weren't enterprising, you would never make it through the ranks to get into a national company to get to be a principal dancer. But when do you slow down? Do you know how to pace? Do you listen to your body? Our conclusions, similar to those elite ballet students who dropped out, psychological and physical factors characterize injuries in professional dancers as well. And the risk factors being 30 years or older, the number of years performing this very demanding artificial technique, secondary amenorrhea, and being an overachiever. Outcome. Well, we did these studies a while ago. It's continued with our research over the years, and it's culminated in New York City Ballet's current wellness program, where we've reduced disability by 46%. It also led to our book, The Dancer's Way, which I wrote with the company for all dancers and different techniques. Just to give you a summary, we have annual screenings because you can't just do it once, right? Every year your body's changing and it might tie in with what we recommend for what they do at the gym. They often have no idea what they're supposed to do and they do the wrong things. And I'll give you an example. A principal dancer who came to see me, male, very muscular afraid to um, build up any more muscles by using the equipment. So he did sprints in the swimming pool, which release, releases human growth hormone, which contributes to muscles in you know, bodybuilders. Absolutely the worst thing he could be doing for himself. Dancers love information. So give them information, but do it in a positive way, like you'll have fewer injuries if you take some breaks. It's good for you. The dangers of overwork, believe it or not. You want to pace yourself. You want to know the signs of burnout. There's a lot to cover. Physical and psychological interventions, if they're showing signs of eating disorders or they're not coping with the stress of this profession. So. If you'd like any more information on occupational stress, I cover a lot of it in, on my website uh, for all performers, not just dancers. I work with opera singers and actors and musicians 